Hello again, and welcome to La Soufre Today, where we look at the ongoing eruption of La Soufre volcano in St. Vincent. And with us today, of course, is Mr. Roderick Stewart. Good morning, Rod. How are you doing? Good morning, Stacey. I'm doing great. Great. And Rod is the current uh, team lead for the scientific team on island, but this is his last week. So, Rod, what can you tell us about the volcano um, this week? What's been happening? I mean, the, the story is really the same as I think I told you last week. The volcano hasn't changed its activity. The dome continues to grow slowly and relatively quietly. We, we got a good look at it the other day and it is still growing and it's still growing at this sort of average rate of about two cubic meters per second. So really the activity of the volcano hasn't changed much and it continues to, to get bigger and we still wait to see what it decides to do next. And so the activity hasn't changed much, but our monitoring and our, our warnings and all of that remain the same, remain in place. No, definitely. I mean, it, people should not be complacent because nothing has happened. The, the threats are all still there. And the bigger the dome gets, the, 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 the larger some of these threats become. So people still should be aware of what's going. They still should have their plans in place they should still be ready to respond at very short notice if the if Nemo and the government decide that further action is necessary. And I was going to ask you if this kind of, um, uh, it's not really a pause in activity, but if this kind of somewhat of a quiet period from a public perception, sorry, is normal on other volcanoes. And of course, you are currently based at Montserrat and that eruption has been going on since 1995 with very long periods um, where you'd have things being quiet. Can you talk a, a little bit about how uh, this eruption or this volcano compares with the Soufre Hills volcano in Montserrat? Yes, and, and th there's a lot of differences, but there's, there's also similarities. And, and I was in Montserrat in the early days, and, and sometimes it takes me back to that. What happened in Montserrat was they had slow dome growth, although it was with explosions. But because they had like it was a, a U-shaped crater, all the activity was forced down one direction. And that area had been evacuated early on. And therefore, it didn't affect the rest of the island. But the dome got bigger and bigger. And it basically outgrew the crater that it was inside. And I think that there was a marked change in how the volcano affected people once the dome outgrew the crater there, because then we started seeing activity on all sides of the volcano. And it's the same here to some extent, that the dome is, is contained within the crater, but if it gets big enough and starts outgrowing the crater, then we're going to see different types of activity. So both Montserrat and here, a bit of a, a slow start, and then the activity got larger. But we can't assume that's going to happen here. It's always a dangerous thing to do. So we've got to keep monitoring closely in, in case it, it changes its style. And I know you've also worked on uh, the volcano in Rubal. And you want to tell us a little bit about that experience? Well, where is Rubal for some of our viewers? And um, how that compares with this current eruption in St. Vincent? That, that was a very different experience. Rabaul is a, a country that is in the South Pacific, just north of Australia. The country is Papua New Guinea. It shares, it shares an island with um, parts of Indonesia. And the city of Rabaul is basically built inside a, a caldera, which is a, a very large volcanic feature. And it has two active volcanoes in it. And basically, it hadn't seen an eruption for 40 or 50 years. And it went from this sort of inter-eruptive state to a full-scale, large explosive eruption in about 36 hours. Mm. So those 36 hours were mad, not panic, but confusion. Our monitoring equipment was not up to scratch. At times, we really didn't know what's going on. Um, they had to evacuate 20,000 people overnight. 
And they basically self-evacuated because the government plans weren't properly in, in place. Communications weren't working. It, it, people weren't prepared for things to happen so quickly. Mm -hmm. And we were incredibly lucky that there was a very small number of casualties. But within half a day of that eruption starting, the entire town had been destroyed, including my house. And 20,000 people were displaced immediately into various camps. And then it was several years of sort of catch up, trying to get the monitoring back working condition, trying to make sure people were safe from future eruptions. So very different and, and, and it's a lesson. It, you, you have to be ready for these things. You have to have your plans in place. You have to be ready. And maybe we're fortunate here because we've got this slow start Mm -hmm. And we don't know if it's going to be a big eruption. It might decide to stop. But we've got this opportunity to make sure that we're ready to deal with any larger activity from La Sofria volcano. Yeah, and it certainly sounds like, um, you know, St. Vincent is definitely uh, in a better place in terms of preparedness, both from a scientific perspective in terms of the monitoring network and from NEO's perspective in terms of getting plans in place for community evacuations and that kind of thing. So um, we shouldn't have the same kind of, of, of scenario. We, we, we shouldn't, but I mean, sometimes it's difficult to, to predict what's going to happen. In, in the Rabal experience, there were a total of, I think it was nine casualties. Several of them were in road accidents during the evacuation. Mm. A couple of them were killed by lightning because the volcano often causes lightning. I think no one was actually directly killed by volcanic effects. It was more in the, the sort of the chaos that followed on. Yes, and, yes. I mean, I, I'm up here in Belmont at the moment, and I was out for a drive yesterday, you know, and those roads are not conducive to a, a rapid escape from here. So the, the government has to be aware of that. And I know Nemo are looking at how to do sea evacuations. Yes, they are. happened in previous eruptions. I think they're even going to do a, a, a practice of, yeah. and a test of, of some of these evacuations. Yes, yes. Because little things, little things like landslides or, or even road accidents can cut you off and, and, and slow the evacuation. Yes. So, yeah, things to be learned, things to be ready for. And, and I know Nemo is looking into all of that. I mean, the trade winds exercise a couple of years ago, they were. Um, uh, simulations done and so on. So, so Rod, I know that this is your last week. Um, Professor Robertson Ritchie is going to be back on island from today and he will be taking over as lead of the scientific team. So thank you very much for your, your work. And I know you've done a lot of work in training um, local um, technicians and so forth to build capacity there. Any closing comments or messages or anything before, well, before you wrap well, up? Well, the first thing is I, I don't want to leave. I mean, <laughs> it's really nice being here. It's nice doing this. It's important work. Yes. But they do need me back in, in, in Rabaul. Not in Rabaul. <laughs> in in Montserrat. Montserrat to, to do other things. So I will continue to be sort of monitoring here from a distance. I've set up all these computers so I can access them from... Montserrat. I'm fairly certain I'm going to be back again. We, we basically plan to have a, a rotation of the, the team leads, maybe four or five of us. So I guess I'll be back again in another, you know, three to four months. So I look forward to seeing and working with everyone again when I return. Great. And we know, as you say, you continue to be working on the, on the team, but remotely. So thanks again, Rod, and best of luck. And I hope everyone on island stays safe. And just reminding everyone who's reading from St. Vincent that the NEMO and the UESRC are the official sources of information on the eruption of La Sufre Volcano, and that visits to the crater are still prohibited at this time. Thanks, everyone, and take care. Bye. Bye.